Hey everybody, it's Allie and welcome to my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, August 29th. It's been a couple of weeks uh, since I've done a vlog, but um, it's really good to be back and talking with you guys again. Um, I didn't have a chance to vlog for the last couple weeks, but I have been watching. That's like one thing that you can always count on. Like, sure as the sun will set, Allie will be watching YNR, even if I don't have a chance to make notes. Um, but I actually, I make notes typically when I'm watching the show, um, just to kind of keep my thoughts together. Um, and the one note that I had <laughs> from the last couple weeks back was this. Does Adam have to carry his testicles around in a wheelbarrow? Because this guy has huge balls. <laughs> one note I had for two weeks of YNR. Um, because not only did Adam manage to wriggle his way out of a court conviction, but then he turns around and sues nearly everyone in Genoa City. I mean, if that's not cojones, I don't know what is. Um, so since we didn't get a chance to talk about uh, the court verdict, um, I'm very surprised that Adam got away without any punishment whatsoever. Um, and I thought it was, it was sickeningly sweet, but also really terrible that Adam wouldn't let his attorney um, discredit Sharon in any way, shape, or form, yet the attorney was relentless with Ashley, who, as far as I'm concerned, is the biggest victim in all of this. I mean, she suffered more than anyone, I think. And watching her on the stand, um, I think that was two weeks ago, but watching her on the stand just trying to be strong and um, just trying to keep herself together and having to recount some of the worst months of her life and some of the worst experiences of her life, especially giving her history, just, it, it tore my heart out. It was really hard to watch. Um, but <laughs> Victor got in a really good punch at Adam this week at the athletic club, which which really made up for it. I really felt that that was a punch on behalf of everyone um, in Genoa City and maybe everyone watching the show. Um, and the best part about the punch was that Victor hits him and Adam falls backwards over a piece of uh, like weight equipment, like a weight machine. And it was like very nice acting too, because it seemed like that would have been a tough maneuver as an actor, um, like the body work to do that without being able to hurt yourself. But, um, but Victor punched him and he fell backwards over that weight machine and I loved it. <laughs> that was like very healing for me. Um, so now, thanks to Skye's cooperation with Victor, Adam has decided to drop the lawsuit against the Newmans. Who saw that coming? Um, I think that probably at this point, Jack is wishing that maybe he hadn't separated the Abbots from the lawsuit now. I was very impressed with how Tucker supported Ashley after the trial. After the way that Tucker had dogged Jill and stole Catherine's company, I have been very leery of him um, and not wanting to like him, but he's turned out to be very good for Ashley and I'm really enjoying him. Um, I was surprised on Monday um, to see how vehemently Ashley tried to fend Tucker off, um, breaking up with him and trying to pretend that she didn't have any feelings for him, um, which we all know she does. Um, Ashley's just been hurt so much in the past year that, you know, you could just really feel that she's simply trying to protect herself from more heartbreak. And it, it makes total sense, uh, you know, from her perspective. But I love that Ashley is keeping Tucker on his toes, you know? It keeps things interesting between the two of them, and I feel like this relationship with Tucker and Ashley has passion. You know, it's like I can see the electricity between the two of them when they're together, you know? And, um, and I can hear the shattering glass when they're together, too, because, you know, Tucker <laughs> breaking down Ashley's door at the pool house may sound romantic, <laughs> but it's also very stocky. <laughs> It's, I say, it's a good thing that that whole thing ended in sex, because if it hadn't ended in sex, and if it was me, 
it would have ended in a restraining order. <laughs> um, it was very creepy. Um, but I am very glad that it, it turned into a lovemaking scene. Um, Tucker really got to show his sexy side during that, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I like this actor a lot more than I thought I was going to. I really like him. He has good hair, <laughs> and that goes a long way. Um, and I just feel like Tucker and Ashley just look good together. They just look like a good couple. Um, so I'm enjoying them. Hey, did anybody else notice that Tucker called Ashley my beauty? Later on, I think it was on Friday at the office, he called her my beauty, which was exactly what John always called her. And I thought that that was a nice little subtle moment that uh, Jack butted in on <laughs> shortly thereafter. Um, it's wonderful to have Jack back at Jabot. I have to say, it's exactly where he belongs. I love Jack being into the business mix. You know, he's been on the outs for way too long, so it's good to have him back. Um, I just hope that he is able to help Ashley not try to hinder her or dominate her, um, as I think he has done in the past. Um, but where Jack is, there's also trouble. So <laughs> um, I'm nervous that Tucker is going to end up ruining his chances with an amazing woman, Ashley, um, by agreeing with Jack's plan to use Abby as um, a, a pawn in business. Because no matter what anyone tries to tell you, business is personal. Just ask Lauren and Jill. <laughs> I officially hate Lauren's mom <laughs> more than I can even imagine. Um, I can't believe that she took Jill's side in that court case to rob her only daughter of her father's legacy. How cruel. What a cruel woman. I hate her. You know, I, you know what? I'm completely biased. <laughs> There's not even any chance of getting um, um, a, a, an unbiased opinion from me on this. Um, it's not like there isn't plenty of inheritance to go around, but I love Lauren, so it's, it's, it's hard for me. It was hard this week to watch her sign away half of her life, you know, half of everything that she's built for, everything that her father worked for. It was, I thought it was difficult to watch. Um, was anyone hoping that Jill would win? Like, is there anybody out there that's on Jill's side? Let's hear from the Jill fans. That's what I want to know. Uh, let's let's have some some Jill love here. Help help me justify Jill's position. Um, help me balance myself out because at this point I'm resenting Jill for butting in on Lauren's life. Um, you know, it's like, what profits a man if he gains the world but loses his soul? And yeah, that sounds like something Tracy would wisely, sagely say. Um, but it's true. It's like, you know, Jill may have gotten herself half of the Fenmore estate, but nobody can stand to be around her. You know, she's not gaining herself any friends. Maybe she should start hanging out with Adam. And they can together be the town pariahs, you know. Um, well, I don't know. It, it may have been a painful court ruling, but... I will admit that I'm sure it will make for some amazing storylines, so I'm willing to concede. Here's to Lauren and Jill fighting cat fights craziness for many years to come. Hey, if Jill's gonna crash Lauren's family, then why shouldn't Lauren do the same? <laughs> I mean, could, how about that gift that Lauren gave to Lily and Kane? I, first of all, commemorative Drew hats for the babies was very special <laughs> and very thoughtful uh, and I enjoyed that and all of the clothes that the kids can wear until they're 18 years old geez like I mean that's like a million dollar gift <laughs> right probably more you know knowing Lily um I thought that was great I wish someone would give me some free clothes um I I loved also the Lauren and Tracy moment um it's always good to see them two coming together and Lauren kind of eating some crow and Tracy getting a chance to be very humble um I would love to see more of Lauren and Tracy I'd love to see them become more close you know because I, I, I love Lauren and Tracy, especially in the last couple of months as they've been bringing her on um, just kind of sporadically, um, she's become like this sagely 
angel from heaven. <laughs> it's like everything she says is so wise and I enjoy it every time. Um, I love I love having her on a part-time basis. I don't know if I could deal with her full-time, but having her part-time just with a sprinkling of Tracy is, is very nice. Um, and she was a wonderful choice for the godmother for Lillian Kane's babies. Um, it was really great to see the Ashby and Winters clan gathered together this week for um, Charlie and Matilda's christening. Um, first and foremost, can, can we all just together have three cheers for Lily's new hair? <laughs> We've been waiting for that for so long. I've been complaining about it for so long. I would have loved to have seen a wig burning party. That would have really, really helped me. A uh, wig burning ceremony and just getting rid of that horrible thing. Olivia seems to have gotten some better hair now too. It's like a rebirth of new hair. Um, Cause I feel like with the end of, uh, with, with the new hair and the end of uh, the cancer and the end of the threat, of Kane's deportation, it feels like um, the end of an era of really sad and depressing storylines for Lily and Kane. So, with the birth of their children, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing some exciting new storylines for those two. Um, and first on the agenda, <laughs> Kane will have to contend with some rascally Australian cattle rustlers. Okay, well that seems like a good place to pause um, and have a little break. So I'm gonna call this the end of part one of my video series for today and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna post actually I think two more videos. So there's gonna be more to come, much more to chat about um, and I'm looking forward to it so I will see you then.